Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Let's go ahead and get started. Today's presentation is all about how Canadian advisors keep clients engaged and grow AUM with YCharts. Your hosts for today are Greg Cagley, the Senior Customer Success Manager for Canada, and Arielle Kutcher, our Canadian Account Executive. As you're following along, please feel free to reach out today with any questions using the chat on the left-hand side of your screen, or if you want to share any feedback. Do note that the content of this webinar is meant for educational purposes only and is not intended to be used as investment advice, nor is YCharts acting as an advising party regarding client funds in any way. Finally, we'll follow up with the recording of this webinar for all attendees. Now I'll pass things over to Greg to get started. All right, let's begin. Welcome everyone to another White Charts webinar. My name is Greg Hagley. I'm a senior customer success manager supporting our Canadian subscribers here at White Charts. Little uh, foreshadowing for what we've got in store for today. I'm going to be your MC, and with me today is Ariel Kutcher, head of our Canadian growth team. Hi, Ariel. How are you doing? I am doing quite all right, Greg. How are you? I'm doing wonderful as well. If you can't tell folks, we've got a really exciting one for you today. It's a Canada-centric tour of the White Charts platform. So we're going to be hitting on specific areas that we've addressed specific to the workflows of our Canadian subscribers. So to that end, just want to start with a little bit of a housekeeping note up front. We would really appreciate any ideas, thoughts, suggestions uh, anyone in attendance might have about how we can improve our offering for Canadian advisors and make your use of the system more pleasant. So please feel free to use the chat's functionality. Uh, the webinar is airing to submit your ideas and questions so that your dedicated success representative, likely me, can get back to you and address those points. We thank you in advance for uh, providing that feedback. It's how we continue to grow and get better. So um, moving right along, let's get into the agenda. By the end of the webinar, we hope to have hopefully demonstrated how YCharts can help the average Canadian investment professional with things like building out portfolios, communicating effectively with their clients, and pulling together Canada-centric investment slash market research with some turnkey reports that are complementary to our Canadian subscribers. So hopefully you guys get a lot of good use out of those exciting reports that we've been putting some time and effort into. So Ariel is going to attest to this as well, but as a company, we put in a lot of thought about what makes our Canadian subscribers workflows different. And uh, we've built out some unique functionality to support those needs. So after all, our goal is to be the go-to platform for Canadian investment advisors and professionals. So with that being said, let's dive right in. Ariel, where would you like to start? Great, great question, Greg. And before jumping in, I just wanted to highlight that we've been working with Canadian teams for years, but now more than ever, we've put a strong focus on building custom workflows, product enhancements, and customizations specifically for Canadian teams to be as effective as possible. YCharts is an end-to-end -end financial data platform, meaning it's powerful enough for a research analyst and intuitive enough to be used in a meeting on the fly by advisors. We're gonna highlight that starting on a portfolio, taking you through a few of the key ways that you can use YCharts to keep your clients engaged and grow your AUM. So let's jump right in and I'm gonna go into a portfolio that I have prepared ahead of time. And Greg, can you see that portfolio now, all right? I sure can. All right, great. And this portfolio is one that I've prepared and a few things to highlight straight off the bat before going into some of the more in-depth functionality that we're gonna cover is just this initial page right here. As you can see, my portfolio is comprised of Canadian mutual funds, stocks, and ETFs, which we all cover, including the same on the U.S. side. So looking at both my portfolio holdings, my returns information that I can toggle on different time frames simply by clicking on whatever I want to focus on. I can even highlight the key stats like Greg can attest to what our clients like to do is customize these to show a few Canada specific metrics. Like if I wanted to highlight my Canada total exposure of my portfolio. You read my mind, Ariel. That, those are the exact examples I was going to have you go into. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. And then I can even highlight the United States total exposure right beside it. So I can highlight how different my investments are in those two respects. And by doing so, my entire page will customize based off of the new criteria I've inputted. And when looking at any portfolio now in YCharts, it's going to highlight those same metrics. So you don't need to redo this whole process every time you go in. You just select what you like to see, and it'll look like that moving forward. Even going past this page even more, I can look at risk information, allocation, returns data, and even a news feed on some of my holdings straight away. 
I can get into any one of these details deeper by just using these tabs up top. So really easy click and play functionality. No matter what I'm looking forward, I can just toggle between these different tabs, get more of an in-depth lens into returns information, upside downside capture. And the nice thing is I can hover over any one of these data points and it'll highlight for me like so. It's really easy to grab whatever data point you're after, whether on the returns side, the allocation side, like I mentioned, going through asset allocation, geographic exposure, market cap data, even sector data on both stocks and bonds and everything in between. It's a really easy way to grab what's really going on under the hood of your portfolio, all in a really nice to look at and easy to use way. And if I want to pull, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Would you agree that this is kind of a, you know, a good place to start for your own internal research when looking at the portfolios you've worked with? Yeah, definitely. And you can get your own great picture into the portfolio using these tabs. But if you wanted to present this to a client, which is a really nice setup there, Greg, I can click on this report tab here and get all of this information nicely laid out and more of a nice client facing way. So as you can see here, there's a ton of different options to choose from, whether that's a comparison report, looking at two portfolios head to head, or an overview report, which is just your single portfolio in itself. But let's say John Doe's handed you a statement and you wanted to compare your portfolio against his as one quick example here. I can select the side-by-side -side report that I wanna run. Let's say this side-by-side -side comprehensive report. I've already plugged in John Doe's statement into my YCharts account, so it's right here for me. I can just click into it. I'll just toss his name in for the cover page so it's super customized and ready to go. I'll hit generate. And this entire report is gonna pull down for me like so. It's really easy to use and some nice things about it. My logo is already built into here, Launchpad Wealth Management. I thought that was a, a really nifty name when I put my YCharts account together. Maybe I need to reevaluate that. But as I go through, you'll see that my colors are even customized like so as well. So fully co-branded, ready to go report, covering on a, a variety of different information. I'd like to, if we can here, Ariel, just sure. uh, key in on that first page that we're looking at here with that key stats section. Um, really great uh, time to point out that we can mimic those stats that you have on the quote page back when we were looking at the uh, website before. Those key stats that you customize, we can mimic a lot of those key stats here on the report itself too. So you'll see that we have those uh, Canada and US total exposure line items in that key stats section. So if you would like to make any changes in the key stats section of a report like this, or um, you know, add your logo or make these custom color selections, whatever it might be, any of those changes, reach out to your dedicated customer success manager, again, probably me, <laughs> and I'd be happy to get this stuff updated for you. And what Greg can probably jump in on as well is that the entire rest of the report here is fully customizable too. So whether you wanna keep the same format that it's in right now, you know, highlighting, on the returns, the asset allocation, the geographic exposure, you know, same data we were looking at before. But if you wanted to cut some pages out, change the format around, you can really do that and make it follow whatever talk track that you like to take during your conversations. So really nice format to the reports as they are, but for any customizations, whether it's cutting out this page or moving this risk information page all the way to the start of the report, it's really up to you and we can build that custom report for you. Yep. And just to reiterate, if you do want to make any of those changes, just reach out to your dedicated customer success rep uh, or Greg at White Charts, <laughs> and uh, we'd be happy to make those changes for you. Exactly. Yeah. Even down to a customizable disclosure section at the end, which I know is super important for some folks. So let us know whatever you need. We can build these out exactly how you'd want to. And then, you know, these reports are really great for more of this formal style of communication. But if you wanted to do this a little more dynamically and create uh, a lot of really great, interesting visuals that you can pull up in the middle of a conversation or customize, you know, in a more time sensitive way, moving around the date ranges or, or building out, you know, a chart like we're looking at here. It's all really easy to do just by toggling over to this fundamental chart tab here. So let's say we wanted to break those two portfolios down side by side, but do so in a chart format here. I can plug that in just like I can do with any security in Y charts and build out this custom report from here. And if I wanted to, let's say, change around the date range, like I mentioned, let's say we wanna capture the start of the coronavirus crisis. I can just change that date range, create this nice comparison, and I can even flip presentation view on to make this nice and client safe, which will get my logo added in right here. I can even title it like portfolio head to head, just the first thing to come on top of my head, you'll probably be more creative than me. 
but I can update that, even show my custom color scheme, and now I have a nice branded customized visual ready to go in the click of a couple buttons here. So whether you're looking for that formal report presentation, something that you can maybe include in an email like so with just a simple chart format, it's really all up to you and the way that you like to engage with your clients. And if we wanted to take this through a few of the different more time sensitive pieces and, and take this through some of the more popular workflows that we have in Y charts, I really wanna highlight one of my favorite pieces of functionality, which is quick flows. And what quick flows will allow you to do is jump into any one of these workflows that our team has already built out for you that has become popular over time. And I can just jump into them regardless of what tool it leads to next. So some of these will be taking us to our charting tool, some to a time series analysis, some to a table. What quick flows to me is, is the glue that holds all of our tools together and allows you to move forward in a workflow as seamless as possible. So jumping into one that probably is catching a lot of our viewers' eyes is this coronavirus crisis one. I can jump into that and without actually needing to build it myself, I can have this entire analysis of the drawdowns of my portfolio compared to major indices, looking back from February 20th till today, all already nicely laid out for me with my custom colors, my logos, for either my own internal stress testing or as a nice visual to explain risk mitigation to a client, for example. You know, we can see here that the S&P 500 went down 33.5%, but our portfolio only went down around 25%. So although the whole market went down, our portfolio went down too, but not as much as everything else. So a great communication tool for clients, uh, you know. If I could just jump in here real quick to Ariel, I want to point out that these quick flows, they're not locked down in any way. So if you were to pull up this coronavirus crisis chart here, and if you wanted to, you know, modify this slightly to make it more uh, relevant for your own clients, you can absolutely do that. So if you wanted to reference a different benchmark in this chart, you can just go up to the security section in the top left and search for whichever benchmark you'd like, or if you'd like to throw in another portfolio to compare against, or you know, an individual security, whatever it might be, you can certainly just search for those there in that security search box, and then it's gonna uh, populate and update the chart here with whatever you make uh, as far as the selection goes. Yeah, that's a great point. So these provide a really great jumping off point, but definitely up to you to see where you wanna take them next, because everyone's got their own spin that they wanna add, make it their own, so great point there, Greg. Yep. And Ariel, if you don't mind, can you show off another quick flow for us? Maybe one of the holdings analysis options? Yeah, definitely. So we have all of these economic impact sections here, which will be a lot of those time sensitive pieces like this one, interest rate spike being popular, financial crisis analysis. But if we wanted to look under the hood and see how each one of our own individual holdings are doing, we can click into any one of these holdings analysis sections which will show us more of a data intensive picture, which kind of takes us to the next section here. Yep. And for example, we can look at the risk metrics associated with each one of our holdings, already nicely laid out for us in this table format, so we can get a good picture as to how each one of our individual holdings differ. Absolutely, I'm glad you pulled this one up, Ariel. This is one of the more popular ones that my clients like to look at. It's a really good, quick way to sort and filter and figure out which of your individual holdings are perhaps introducing more risk to a portfolio than what you would ideally want. Or, you know, maybe if you're not getting as much, you know, return off of, you know, your risk that you would expect, then this is a good place to kind of look under the hood and see which of those securities is really kind of holding you back. Definitely. Yeah, that's a great perspective. And even on the other side of the coin here, we can jump into quick flows again and look at something more returns oriented, like holdings calendar year returns. And this will pull us into a similar format, but a bit different now in our time series analysis. So we can see how each one of our holdings have done year over year, so we can see what's working and what's not. Our portfolio is highlighted alphabetically, so third from the bottom here. And at a glance here, we can see that 2018 was a pretty bad year for my portfolio relatively. And in a second, I can highlight that this Invesco fund up top was my worst performer. And if I wanted to dig in deeper, I can see that it was my worst performer again, even looking back to last year. So maybe this Invesco fund isn't exactly where I want it to be. And the really nice thing about quick flows, which takes us to more of the individual fund or stock side of things here, we can go back into quick flows, cut out of our portfolio, and let's say we want to replace this Invesco fund with another Canadian equity fund. I can type it in, and now we'll have fund specific workflows. Now, just to quickly highlight, if I were to type in a stock here instead, it would give us stock specific workflows too. So quick flows can recognize whatever it is that you're looking at, 
and give you a variety of different options to go down when analyzing it further. So looking at this Invesco fund, we can click into one of my favorites, Find Funds Ranked in Category, which will allow us to evaluate what are the better options for us in the same category as that one. So I'll just remove duplicates straight away and we can see here now that based off of the Canadian equity category, we already have a short list of 23 funds based off of their one year, three year and five year returns and category, expense ratio, sharp and alpha. So without actually needing to build anything ourselves, we have this whole comprehensive analysis already done for us. But I say short list of 23 funds. You know, that's probably not short enough for you to go through one by one. So what we'll do next is use our scoring models tool. And what scoring models is, is our way of allowing you to take a whole comprehensive data set and have Y charts sift through it and pick the best fund for you. And I'll actually run a quick example for us. So Greg, if you wouldn't mind, maybe let's give us a, a few popular metrics here just that our clients like, just so we can run an example here. I'll call this webinar example because I can't think of anything more creative right now. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I would say a lot of my clients like to focus on using kind of some broad stroke performance and risk metrics when creating their scoring models. Um, you know, it's a good, quick, easy way to filter out some of the uh, things that aren't going to be of interest to them. So, you know, we're searching for things like betas and standard deviations of returns, maybe max drawdown numbers, you know, those types of things. So how about I'll just type in, you know, beta, annualized standard deviation, you know, one year total returns. And we'll use Perfect. a quick high level example here. And now the only thing that you'll need to do to make this work for you is just say, you know, maybe for this example, I want a lower beta, I want a lower standard deviation, I want higher returns, but I really want to focus in on returns because you can actually weight them out exactly how you'd want. So I can say, you know, I mostly want to focus in on returns, but I want to equal weight beta and standard deviation. I'll add the score column in. And then what Y charts will do is it will take all of that data and it will sift it and rank it for us. And I'll just sort it so it's top to bottom for us. And now based off of these criteria, we can see that this Fidelity Canadian Opportunities Fund is the best option for us. And before yeah. moving on, I just wanna highlight some other ways that you can screen within Y charts and some customizations we've actually added in for our Canadian clients. So in each one of our tools, which we'll cover further on this webinar here, but in each one of our tools, we actually have templates built out so you don't ever need to start from scratch. So we can go in and highlight, let's say Canadian fund screens specifically, and just jump into workflows like best performing Canadian equity funds, best performing Canadian ETFs, fixed income, category leaders, ESG and SRI funds. And you can take any one of these and make whatever edits you need, but they're a really great jumping off point for whatever analysis you wanna take next. Ariel, one more time if you could. Can I have you close this box and just go through that file menu to basically show how to get to that repository again of those different templates? Yeah, great question. So all I need to do, and this is, goes for any one of our tools, you just need to hit the title of whatever it is that you're looking at. So in this case, new fund screen, if you were in the charting tool, it would say new fundamental chart. So whatever that title is, you can click on it, hit new from template, and you have this whole library in here to click through. So Perfect. Canadian Thank fund you. screen being right here for me. And just by clicking into any one of them, the whole analysis is done for me. And the really nice thing is I can click into one of these, I can run my own scoring model, and then I can inject basically my own personal philosophy into these pre-built templates to get the best of both worlds. And even looking at this scoring model that we ran for this Canadian equity screen in general, we can look at this Fidelity Canadian Opportunities Fund. And the nice thing is we can actually jump back into quick flows and rather than looking at a single fund or a single portfolio or a single stock, we can click over to comparison where we can plug in the two things that we wanna compare and basically jump into the same idea, but from a comparison standpoint. So let's say we wanna go into a performance chart, breaking down these two funds against each other, just to check our work and see if we actually found something better here. You know, from a quick glance, we can see that this Fidelity fund we found outperforms over the last year. But if I wanna go over the last three years, it looks like the difference only heightens. The last five years, I'm assuming the same is gonna happen. So looking at these, it looks like from a perform performance standpoint, we found a better option for us. But if we wanted to flip this around and look at our drawdowns as well, we can go to percent off high under data format. And we can see here that actually that Fidelity fund is less volatile than the Invesco fund as well. 
So because we were able to utilize those risk metrics when screening, we found not only a better performer, but a less risky fund here. So a really great example of how you can use Y charts to not only do your presentations or portfolio analysis, but how you can get in here and do fun research and get down to some better investment ideas utilizing some of the workflows we just covered. And similar to those templates that, that Greg pointed out earlier on the fund screener, like I mentioned, we can go into the charting tool. And if we wanted to highlight some of those templates as well, we have a whole template library in here too. So whether we're looking at asset class data, economic data, or specific to Canadian market data, which is, I guess, what we're covering here at the end of the day, we can just click into these and it's ready to go. So for example, if I wanted to highlight something broad, like the Canada COVID overview right now, I can click into that. And now I can see data like vaccines administered, coronavirus cases, cases per day, and this entire chart is built out for me. And all I need to do is click into it. I'm glad you clicked on that one, Ariel. The COVID vaccine data is actually one of our newer data sets that we added to our economic indicators database. And it's something that a lot of my clients have been interested in seeing and helping their clients, their own clients, kind of stay up to date on, you know, what do the case numbers look like in the in the country or what did the vaccination rates look like? So hopefully this will help you help your clients stay up to date on, you know, how Canada is doing with getting everybody vaccinated. Yeah, definitely. And whether you're looking at maybe something broad like an overview like this or or even if a client comes and asks you a question like which one of the banks is the best one for me we have that already built into here where we can just hit start and we have a breakdown of you know these major canadian banks already broken down against each other looking at returns dividend yield price to book value and even if you wanted to clean this up you know maybe your clients don't really care much for price to book value you can always customize them like we mentioned and get this nice picture breaking down, you know, the total returns, the dividend yield, and highlight the differences between these all. And you can do that with any one of these, whether that's Canadian specific, you can look through any of the other popular ones, like charts of 2020, charts of the decade, and we will update this on an ongoing basis to highlight whatever is going on. That way you can stay up to date with, I guess, what everyone's looking at in general, but also on different ideas to keep your clients engaged. I think this is a good point to uh, to say again, this is where we could really use your feedback. If there's data points that you are regularly looking at to stay up to date on how things are going in the Canadian markets or, you know, by sector or, you know, by asset class, whatever it is, whatever you are looking at regularly, please let us know so we can maybe incorporate those as templates. I'm sure other Canadian advisors would love to look at the same thing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Any feedback is greatly appreciated, especially, you know, with these templates, but also we put out content on an ongoing basis for our Canadian clients. So I guess this is a pretty good place to just jump into our Canadian market wrap up. Every month we put out an entire market wrap for you to use with your clients to keep them engaged, to save down any visuals from it. So we get a lot of good content to put in here, but any feedback would be greatly appreciated on what you would love to see in here. And I guess just taking you through some of the ideas in this one specifically, we have ideas like the Canadian dollar picking up ground on the US dollar, the euro. Ideas like, similar to what we just covered, the coronavirus statistics, major index data, sector performance, and even hot stocks and worst performing stocks that have come through that month. And what's really nice about these, and I'll scroll back up to the top here, is if you like one of them, you can just click modify and Y charts and it'll actually pull into your Y charts account to allow you to make any adjustments that you personally want to make or even just to save it down and send them out to your clients, include in a blog, share to social media, whatever it is that you want to do with it. All you need to do is click modify and Y charts and it's here for me. And if I wanted to download this down and share it with whomever, I can just hit download and open it up just so you see what it looks like. And it's perfectly optimized for whatever presentations that you want to end up putting it into. So really nice the way that you can take not only the templates, but also the actual monthly recurring workflows and ideas that we put out for our clients and do whatever it is that you want to do with them. So just another reminder on that monthly market wrap up, that is something that you would need to sign up for to get access to it and to have it emailed to you. So if, again, if you're interested in receiving that on a monthly basis, just reach out to your customer success manager and they will forward on uh, to you the link that you can use to sign up for these monthly reports. Yeah, 
Definitely, definitely. And if you're not a current client, you can reach out to me and my email will be included here as well. And I'd be happy to get you signed up. And I guess on the same topic of content that we put out on an ongoing basis, another really popular form of content is our fund flows report and fund flows data in general. I have actually a few of our most recent reports pulled up here. And Greg, if you wouldn't mind just highlighting some of the ways that our clients like to use reports like this. Yeah, absolutely. So these have been increasingly popular here at White Charts. I think just as the word spreads that we put these together, you know, they're becoming more and more popular. But these do a really nice job of creating a very easy to digest view at these different higher levels into where money is flowing. These are cash inflow and outflow levels. So we can look by, for example, broad asset class listed here at the top. We can look by different fixed income categories. We can look by region. We can look by style, all these different ways to see how money is flowing at these higher levels. So a lot of times my clients are using them as kind of a gauge of uh, what sentiment is within the markets. So you can get a good idea of, you know, is more money flowing into uh, equity funds or fixed income focused securities, whatever it might be. But of course, you can also see specifically, you know, which sectors or which categories or, you know, which particular areas within the markets more advisors are pumping more money into. So, um, you know, hopefully that'll be a nice data point that you can use to get an idea of what other people are thinking about uh, their overall state of the economy where, uh, where, you know, people are shifting their clients money into. And Definitely. the second report here that Ariel has pulled up, sorry, Ariel, um, I just want to point out that we do also, uh, in one of the two reports that's generated, we produce a list of the highest inflow and uh, highest outflow numbers as well by fund and by ETF uh, individually. So you can see, or I guess kind of glance to see which funds, which ETFs have been extremely popular or which ones are maybe, you know, uh, becoming less popular amongst advisors, amongst uh, clients, things like that. So, you know, keep an eye out for things maybe that you're invested in or get some new ideas on things that other people are really liking right now. Definitely, definitely. And yeah, I, I've seen a lot of popularity with reports like this, especially because they come out on a monthly basis. So it's a great way to stay on top of the trends that are going on, how they're shifting. And you can actually even use this fund flow data to screen by in our screening tools. So you can take a look and see where money is coming in at, coming into, where money is going out of. And you, you can actually see that as well on an individual fund level. So if I go back to my Y charts tool here, and I can plug in, let's say that fund or one of the similar funds we were looking into earlier, I can plug it in. And as I scroll through the fund page, we can see how much money is coming in and out over the last month, three months, six months, so on and so forth, and be able to grab that data straight away. And even just highlighting the fund page here, we can look at the fund flows data, the fundamentals, the growth estimates, risk information, and a lot of that same data we were looking at the portfolio on. But here on the individual fund level, and we can run reports just in the same way. And I, I guess this wraps a ribbon around a lot of what we wanted to cover here. And, and to review, you know, from start to finish, we looked at a portfolio, we're able to run reports on it, dig into the allocations, the performance, customize the reports with key metrics like US versus Canadian total exposure. We moved on to stress test our portfolio. We dug into our holdings, found one that wasn't working as well as we wanted it to and found a replacement pretty easily by using our screening and scoring tools there. We compared them against each other and did a, did a pretty nice deep dive into Canadian specific templates like fund screening, like charting, and even going into some custom market perspectives like our Canadian market wrap up, like our fund flows reports, and even looking down here on the individual fund level. Anything you'd like to add there, Greg? No, I, I think you're right. I think that's a really good high level overview. And again, I just want to reiterate any of these things specifically that you'd like to run through. Uh, feel free to reach out to your dedicated customer success manager and they would be more than happy to run through this with you on a one on one basis or a little bit more in depth and in any, into any of these particular areas. But, you know, I think we're doing OK on runtime, Ariel. Do you want to maybe hit on custom securities a little bit? Yeah, definitely. You know, looking at custom securities, uh, at least personally, I've seen a lot of popularity across Canada with this tool. We actually recently got some great coverage by Wealth Professional, who since we've had so much popularity and so many people asking about it, they wanted to cover it themselves. And actually, Greg, who we're on the phone with right now, ran his own webinar on custom securities. So he's kind of the in-house expert here on that. 
That's exactly right, Ariel. Actually, this was just a uh, way to shamelessly plug another webinar that I completed in the past. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, but yes, we uh, recorded a webinar on the new custom securities functionality. And so if you want to learn a little bit more about it, if you haven't yet played around with it, um, you can go to all the different recordings that we have for the webinars through the support menu. Um, and you can uh, locate that webinar and learn everything there is to know about custom securities. But Ariel, if you could please just, do you have an example of a custom security that you could pull up and just kind of showcase how you can uh, analyze those once you have them created? Yeah, definitely. And and personally, I've seen a lot of popularity with custom securities because although that fund that we were just looking at, you know, is public and you can get all the information on it, oftentimes people are invested in proprietary funds or non-public securities and they want to still be able to reflect those in their portfolios. So that's what this custom security tool is great for. It will allow you to upload whatever return history you have on that and still be able to look at that, whether on its own, in a portfolio, and be able to communicate that to either a client or a prospective client, like this fund right here. Perfect, yeah, thank you for covering that real quick for us, Ariel. So I do think that that wraps it up. Thank you so much for running through all that, Ariel, really appreciate it. Um, I hope everyone on this call got a lot out of it, and. Um, hopefully it comes through that we have put in a lot of time and effort into not just thinking through how our Canadian friends are leveraging white charts maybe a little bit differently, but also putting together some unique solutions and functionality to, you know, make them even more dangerous here in white charts for their own clients. So uh, with that, we're going to wrap things up. But real quick, I do just want to shout out one last reminder, please. We would love your feedback on how we can improve white charts and add more to it to help make uh, white charts your go-to tool for analyzing Canadian markets and Canadian securities. So if you do have any feedback for us, please, please put that in the chat uh, here on the webinar. Otherwise, uh, I think we're going to wrap things up. So thank you all again very much for attending, and uh, we look forward to supporting you here going forward. Take care. Thanks, Greg and Ariel, for hosting today, and thank you to everyone who joined us. We will send out a copy of this webinar to all attendees in case you want to review anything we talked about today or to share it with your colleagues. We appreciate any feedback that you might have shared with us. If you also submitted any questions we weren't able to get to during today's webinar, we'll be sure to follow up with the information you're looking for. Thanks again, everyone.